All right, Job chapter 32 and verse 8. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. It says, there is a, but there is a vital force and a spirit of intelligence in man. And the breath of the Almighty gives them understanding. Hallelujah. Such a simple, short verse of scripture. Let's read it again. But there is a vital force and a spirit of intelligence in man. And the breath of the Almighty gives them understanding. We're still in the series, No Limits, but I want to give today's message a unique title. I want you to say the person sitting beside you, there is a genius within you. That person didn't believe. Look for another neighbor and tell the person, there is a genius within you. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, inspire us, instruct us by yourself. Use my thoughts, use my words to inscribe your will in the hearts of your people. Shift us in understanding. By the time this is over, let us be transformed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, and we worship you. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I need you to realize that this verse of Scripture is not talking about born-again Christians. This verse of Scripture is talking about man. There is a vital force. In every human, there is a spirit of intelligence. The breath of the Almighty gives them understanding. And I want you to understand this. The vital force is the spirit of intelligence. It's one, one and the same thing. And before now, the mistake I used to make was that I thought that the vital force, the spirit of intelligence, and the breath of the Almighty were the same thing. But look at it very well. There is a vital force. That vital force is the spirit of intelligence. But apart from that, there is the breath of the Almighty that gives them understanding. Now, what is understanding? Understanding is the ability to process ideas and feelings. The ability to process what? Data. The ability to process ideas, thoughts, and feelings. That is what? That is understanding. This is what I am saying. There is a God chip within you. Okay? There, let, let me use your phone. Anybody with a very good phone or you have a bad phone, you are trusting God to change. As long as it is smart. Good. So, uh, this is an iPhone and... Do you know that outside of your relationship with MTN, you have a relationship with Apple? That this phone will not work if it is not activated by Apple. So when you start the phone for the first time, um, it, it would register you. So on their database, this phone is unique, as a unique identity. It has to connect with Apple for it to even start working. Because inside this device, is a chip that connects with Apple. And then from time to time, Apple will update. Are you getting it now? So the... ...century language, there's a chip in man. It's a God chip. It is through that chip that from time to time, he gets updates. the inspiration of God. So there may be an announcement that there is a new Apple software. But if your phone, though connected to MTN, cannot connect to the servers at Apple, it will not be able to get the update. Are you getting it now? When God designed man, the Bible said when God was going to create man, he said, let us make man in our image. If you read Genesis chapter 2, God formed man's body, then he now breathed into the man. That was how he, that was how he installed the chip. And the design is that from time to time, there will be updates. There will be inspiration. Did you get that? Now, thank you very much. Now, let's go on with the message. So, there's a God chip within you, a spirit of intelligence. According to God's design, every human is super intelligent. Because when God created man, he said, let us make man in our image. He was not making a class of people or a group of people. He was making all mankind. So when he made Adam, Adam was a prototype for humanity. And inside Adam, he placed what? That God chip. 
a spirit of intelligence. But it is through inspiration that we get understanding. So what does sin do? Sin disconnects man from divine inspiration and then corrupts our understanding. Are you following me now? So sin is like a virus now, introduced to your system. It disconnects you from the mother organization. You can't get updates. Then the understanding you had before, that can't be updated now, now even gets corrupted. That condition is what we call fallen man. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Let's look at this from scripture. Genesis 2 and verse 7. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. So the key to, be, to becoming a living being is the breath of God. The inspiration of God. God designed it. If you look at the whole of creation at the source of a thing, is the sustainers thereof. So when he was going to create trees, he spoke to the ground. And that's why when you disconnect trees from the ground, they die. When he was going to speak, I mean, create fishes and aquatic animals, he spoke to the sea. That's the reason why when you take them out of water, they what? They die. When he was going to create man, I know you've heard this before, but we need to push it a little bit further. He spoke to himself, but you need to know what about God sustains you. It's the breath of God. The breath of God. It's not just your connection to God. It is the breath of God. The breath of God. So John chapter 15 and verse 6. All right. Oh, sorry. Verse 5 and verse 6 from the Message Bible now says, I am the vine. You are the branches. When you are joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Look at verse 6. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood. So from God's perspective, death is not that you cease to exist. Death is that you are disconnected. Yeah. Are you following me closely now? So anyone who disconnects from me or who separates from me is dead wood. Gathered up and thrown into the fire. For the sake of understanding, let us read verse 5 again from the Passion Translation. John chapter 15 and verse 5. It says, I am the sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. I need you to pay attention to me this morning. I didn't come to just preach and teach. Today is deliverance. Amen? Not your neighbor. Tell the person today is your deliverance. Today is your deliverance. Okay, let's, let's look at it again. John 15 and verse 5, TPT. I am the sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within. So where does your fruitfulness come from? It says from within you. Because you are vitally connected to him as your source. So, but when you live separated from me, you are powerless. Now watch this. It is possible to live but separated. So when he talks about death, he's not talking about that you've stopped living. Death is that you continue to live, but now you are not vitally connected. It says you what? It says you are powerless. So the question is, what happened at Eden? Okay, what happened at Eden? Geographical Eden, not at Teens Church. What happened at Eden? Now watch this. In Eden, Adam lived inside out. Somebody say inside out. Inside out. Okay, Adam lived inside out. External factors had no influence on him. Okay? And I brought a diagram to show you the way Adam lived inside out. Okay? Show them that diagram. He thinks, then he feels, then he will act, and then he will see the result of his action, and by so doing, it transforms his world. Listen to me. If God puts you and I inside the bush, I know you call it the Garden of Eden. See, but if you put me inside any garden surrounded by wild animals, I don't call it beautiful. The Bible said, God said to them, you are blessed. <laughs> so like, With chimps and monkeys and snakes and crocodiles, no restaurants, no airports, no cars, no hospitals. Are you still blessed? What I'm trying to tell you is your condition right now is better than Adam's condition. He had no roof, he had no shelter, yet God said, I've blessed you. I have blessed you. And God did not have a problem with his environment. God did not have a problem with the fact that he didn't have a house. 
Because everything that God designed for him to have was inside him. Are you listening to me? And then he will think, just like God, everything God will do is a function of his thoughts. In the beginning was the Logos, okay, from where you get logic. And the thoughts, the, the Logos was with God and the Logos was God. Are you getting it now? So God has no issues with externals because we transform externals with what? With what is within, with thoughts. As far as God is concerned, thoughts are things. Now, when we get to Genesis chapter 2, the Bible now says, I want to show you Adam. And as I show you Adam, I'm showing you yourself. The Bible said it's not good for a man to be alone. I will make a help suitable for him. Whose idea was that? God. The Bible did not record that Adam was there. The Bible did not say that God said to Adam, I will make a help suitable for you. These were just the thoughts of God. So the Bible now says, so and then God created different animals. The Bible said, and then God brought all the animals to Adam to see what he will call them. Watch this. God did not tell Adam, I will make a help suitable for you. The same way God did not tell Adam, let us make man in our own image. See, God will think first and then he will do. You understand? He does not need to tell you. But as far as God is concerned, his thoughts are things. But he will think first and then he will do. So God brought Adam to, I mean, brought all the animals to Adam to see what he will call them. It was a test to see whether this guy is functioning properly. Whatever Adam called each animal, that was its name. Because Adam had the ability, because of vital connection, to access the thoughts of God and to execute the thoughts of God on earth. So what God was going to call the lion was what Adam called it. What God was going to call the chimpanzee was what was Adam called it. But there was one problem. The Bible now said, but there was no help suitable for Adam. Did he know that God wanted a help? How did he not choose the chimpanzee for a wife? How did he know what to choose? Are you listening to me? What was his point of reference? Because I'm telling you that if you have never eaten bitter leaf soup before, and I take stubborn grass, and I mix it with palm oil, and I put some okoroko there, and fish, and I tell, this is what I'm trying to say, the day your wife served you afang for the first time, how did you know it was afang if you have not tasted afang before? Everything we recognize is because we have a point of reference. Yes. Are you listening to me? The reason why you call me short is because we have seen wisdom. Do you understand now? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm not using wisdom again. Those are really tall people. Next time you see wisdom, tell him I said he's a short man like me. Those are really tall people. You cannot call me short if you don't know him. For you to call something, there's a point of reference. So when, when he looked at all the animals and he said not suitable, what was his point of reference? Are you listening to me now? The intention of God. He had access to the thoughts of God. That was his point of reference. Without conversation, he could reach into God's database and look at what's on ground and say, this is not it. Look at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 22. Then the Lord God made a woman. Watch this. Now, you know the Bible said God put him into a deep sleep. I, I skipped all of those because of time. So God made him, put him into a deep sleep. God took out of his side, made a woman. And God now brought the woman to him just like he brought the animals. No conversation. Look at verse 22 to verse 23. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. The man said, this now is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Watch this. She shall be called. You didn't get it. Go back to the first line. Then the Lord God made a, where was Adam? Sleeping. She shall be called. How did he know? For she was taken out of. Where was he when that was happening? Ask your neighbor, how did he know? That's the God chip at work. Okay? That's the God chip at work. That's why you would understand when you come into the New Testament and John says, you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. That was what he was talking about. Now look, there's a God chip within you. You have a knowing nature. You can access God's database and then from there make references. And you can make decisions on earth comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. That's why the Bible says uh, that for this cause we faint not. Even though our outward man perish, but our inward man is renewed day by day. Why? Because we what? We look at the things that are not seen. Because the things that are seen are what? They are subject to change. That's why the Bible says that we have this light, this treasure in earthen vessels. What is that treasure? Is the Godship. Are you listening to me? What happened at Eden? 
Adam was now tempted to live outside in. And he fell for it. And since then, he has been living from outside in. Now, external factors dominate him. Now, look at what that looks like. Show them the diagram. Now, Adam sees. And because of what he's seeing, he feels. And based on his feeling, he acts before he thinks. And now he's limited. Because the reason why you call yourself broke is not because you checked God's database and you saw broke there. The reason why you, saw, you, saw, you call yourself broke is because the last time a deduction was, you know, and that's very, very painful. When they deduct from your money and you have a lot of money, it's not very painful. But when you have 300 naira in your account, then at the end of the month, you now get an alert that they've deducted 50 naira. They call it card maintenance. I say, wait, I, I am the one carrying my ATM card. What did you maintain for me? They say card maintenance charge. They now show you your balance. Then they will now collect VAT. On the, so that your 300 now will now begin to look like a caricature of finance. You now see 230, they are here. 230 something. Okay? When you see that, how do you feel? How do you act? What do you think? You now go to a family meeting. They will say we need to contribute each 500,000. You will now say, I don't have money. Limitation. Say to your neighbor, no limits. No limits. No limits. No limits. No limits. And what have you done? You are falling for that temptation to live from outside in. Let's look at how Adam, well, Eve fell and took Adam with her. But let's look at what the Bible says. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 6. When the woman saw. Amen. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the mind. Now see now, not think now. Amen? Can you see? And also desirous for gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. So where were they before? They were moving around the garden. Were they blind? So when the Bible talks about their eyes being open here, the Bible is talking about an awareness they did not have before. An awareness that was not unnecessary. I mean, an awareness that was unnecessary. Their eyes were open. Now watch this. And they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings with themselves. Once you begin to live from outside in, the solutions you come up with will be substandard. Because when God came, God said, you see, when you look at the Bible, this is a parallel. God said, so you want to cover yourself now? Now you realize you are naked now. There is a better way. God killed an animal and covered them with skin. This one is durable. That one you came up with is inferior. How long will the leave last? That's what happens when you begin to do what? When you begin to live from outside in and you don't, cons I mean, you don't consult your Godship. Are you listening to me now? The same thing with the parable of talents. Okay? I, 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 I know you to be a hard man. Reaping where you have not sown. And I was afraid. So I hid your money. Here is your money. The master said, even if what you have said about me is true, there is a better way you would have thought. There is something better you would have done. Listen to me. Once you live from outside in, you will come up with mediocrity. You will create substandard solutions. He said, you should have taken my money and put it in the bank. Then when I came back, I would have gotten it back with interest. In other words, you could still have given me results without flexing, without doing anything, without stretching yourself, just by making the most of the system that is around you. And somebody listening to me right now, you think something is wrong with your life and the problem is because you are living from outside in and you are making, please forgive me, I didn't come to insult you this morning, but it's the truth. Stupid decisions. Look at what the Bible says. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid, look at their actions now. The one who created you. The one who fixed you. The one who provided the garden for you. If you must hide from anybody. See stupid actions now. From stupid thinking. Because they start to operate from where? From outside in. They hid like you can hide from God. In our foolishness, we forget his omnipresent. In our foolishness, we forget that he's omniscient. You can't hide from God. David understood that in Psalm 139. He says, even if I go to, listen to me, some of you think every time you need to hear from God. Now I'm shooting myself in the leg right now. You need to come to church. You don't come to church to experience God. You come to experience to, church to experience the church. Yeah. Amen. That's another dimension. You didn't come for God. 
See, because if it's about God, he's everywhere. You didn't have to come here. Listen to me. That phone illustration. You have a relationship with Apple. Okay? But for you to be connected to Apple, you need to be on what? The internet. Hmm? The internet is the internet. It's the body of Christ. It is people. Everything that God wants to pass across to you is going to pass across to you through people. So the strength of what you receive from God sometimes is according to the strength of your network. You may have, to, you may, you may have an update to download, but if your, network, if your network is weak, you will not be able to download what others have downloaded because your network is weak. Did you come to church this morning? The eyes of both of them were open, so they hid from God. Okay? Uh, among the trees, they, they, they were hiding inside what he created. <laughs> Amen. And some of us are hiding behind our TVs. Okay, you are hiding behind your car. Okay, you, you are forming big man with things that God gave you. They were hiding behind trees. But the Lord called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid. This is a negative emotion that never existed in Eden before. I was afraid because I was naked. Watch this. The nakedness was not a new development. The reason why, and I see what I'm trying to tell you. You know some of you pose, you act, you, you cover everything, you don't talk to us, you're not vulnerable because you think you are hiding from us what you are going through because you think we have a massive opinion of you. <laughs> but my Yoruba people know, Nigerians generally will say that the cops cannot hide from the people that will bathe it. And some of us are hiding from our helpers. Because what you think people think about you is more important than what your Godship is telling you. Says I heard your voice. You heard the voice of God, and then you hid because you were naked. Listen, when He created you, how was you? Amen. I mean, it's like an eight-year-old boy. The mother wants to enter the bathroom. I said, "Mommy, mommy, 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 God, mommy, I'm not wearing clothes." Like, Wait, you don't understand. <laughs> All the parents understand what I'm saying because they're like. <laughs> Oh, there are things I can't say on pulpit. <laughs> it's because, oh goodness, I will see you at a couple's meeting. You see, but that's how we feel. What are you? What are you? What are you? See, because you are naked. I created you naked. You've been naked all the while. You named all the animals naked. <laughs> you were accessing God naked. Is somebody listening to me? You say, it's because I don't have money. You don't need money. If not having money is being broke, then in Genesis chapter 1, God was broke. So being broke is not a problem. Look at the whole of creation. Money was not involved. Are you listening to me? Money was not involved. See, but the very thing that becomes the paper you are looking for, amen, is your inheritance as a child of God. You are as broke to the degree to which you are not bringing out. You are not a good man out of the good start. Will fling out good things. See, but when you start living from outside in, you cannot even recognize the good that is already in you. So the Bible says in the book of Philemon that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of all the good things that are inside you. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor, I do good because I am good. <laughs> Say it again, I do good because I am good. Listen, I'm not talking about your education, I'm talking about your Godship. Your Godship. Hallelujah. Your Godship. Your Godship. And he said, now watch this. He said, I was afraid because I was naked. Look at what God said. And he said, who told you you were naked? Because up until this moment, everything you did was a function of thoughts you received from me. This misbehavior is because you have started living outside in. Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree I commanded you not to eat from? Are you listening to me now? He fell for the temptation. But Jesus also was tempted. It was not in the garden, it was in the wilderness. He was also tempted to live from the outside in. But there's something you need to realize about Jesus. If you're not careful, you will miss it. What you must realize about Jesus is that he did not just come to die for us. He came to live, to show us how to live inside out. So when you read your Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, stop looking for promises to claim. Mm -hmm. No, look for pattern. The way he lived is the way we are supposed to live. Amazingly, I was going to say it was not in Genesis chapter 2, but that would be heresy. Because it was there. Amen? Amen. Matthew chapter 4, verse 2 to 4. This is Jesus' masterclass on living inside out. After fast, fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. 
the Bible just needed to say it, it didn't break six o'clock every day. <laughs> That's why, you see, because when you say 40 days, I'm intimidated with 40 days. You don't have to put night there. <laughs> but for people like me to know that it was not breaking at 6 p.m. every day, it says 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible said he was hungry. Say external. external. Hungry. That's how he felt. Hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, that's an internal thing. It's an identity thing. Your identity is not external. Your identity is inside. If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Inspiration. Inspiration. What I have or what I don't have is not the secret of my life. The secret of my life is the... That's coming from the mouth of God. See, because he never stops speaking. I like the way a man of God described it. He said, when God said, let there be light, the reason why there's still light, the sun is still suspended, is because the word that God spoke, okay, that produced the sun, is a proceeding word that continues. So it's not let there be light, it's let there be light, 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 yeah. <laughs> Is somebody listening to me? He, he, see, so if God gives you a word, for those of us who have been disobedient, you understand what I'm talking about. When God gives you an assignment, when God communicates something, you can go in another direction, you can do the way, the day you reconcile, the day you come back, the word you were running away from is still waiting for you because he's not a man that he should lie not the son of man that he should change his mind i wish we can get there as people where before you say something you process it so much that when it comes out of your mind mouth you don't change your mind oh boy did you catch that so Jesus gave us a pattern. Man shall not live by bread alone. The same thing the Bible says in the book of Romans. The kingdom of God is not in meat and in drink. It is in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The breath of God. Hallelujah. The breath of God. So you've got to do what? You've got to live inside out. Now, I could stop the message there because that's today's message. But I need to lay a foundation for next Sunday's message. Amen? Amen. And when I've laid that foundation, when you come next week Sunday, you'll be hearing it for the second time. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So somebody is asking me, so pastor, how do I unleash my genius? There's a Godship within me. How do I unleash my genius? Number one, reconnect with God. Okay, reconnect with God. What does that mean? Accept the gift of salvation. If you're listening to me right now and you have not made that decision or you made that decision but you've been flippant about it, you've not been conscious that, look, I am now vitally rejoined to God. You need to remake the decision so that you, be, you can be conscious. Hallelujah. That's the first thing. Reconnect with God. And I believe everybody, if not everybody, 90% of those listening to me have made that decision already. That's step number one. Reconnect with God. Now, step number two is invest in fellowship with God. Okay, invest in fellowship with God. Let's go back to the iPhone. So on your iPhone, you have um, an icon that says settings. And anytime you have an update, you would see a number on that icon telling you how many notifications you have on this app or on this, um, in this space that you have not checked. Your system, your phone will not be updated if you don't go there. Do you understand now? So what I'm trying to say to you is, I don't even know what's the current OS we are using now on iPhone. 17. It's possible for somebody to still be using 10.5. Because every update from 10.5 to 17, the person just keeps seeing numbers. Maybe it's the number of years I have left to use the phone. You, you understand what I'm saying? There are people who name the name of the Lord, but who don't fellowship with him. So they don't get updates. Their Godship is as a cake as the Godship of Esau. No update. Are you listening to me? John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but therein shall you meditate day and night, that you may be careful to observe to do all that is written in it. Then shall you make your way prosperous and have good success. Follow me closely. God and his word are one. So to fellowship with God is to fellowship with his word. Now, when you are with the word of God, you are not to read it. You are to study it. There are things you are supposed to observe. Looking on the surface will not give them to you. That's why you need to do it day and night. Meaning you need to repeat it. You can't read John chapter 3 once and say you have read it. You have to read it over and over and over and over again. He said there are some things you will observe. And then you will start doing those things. It is when you start doing those things that you will what? That you will make your way prosperous. James chapter 1 and verse 25 now says, Now he that looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom 
and continues in it. Not being a forgetful era, but a doer of the work. They shall be blessed in what they do. What are they doing? Looking intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continuing in it. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you act on the word and you don't get the result you want because you think you know what you, but you don't understand it yet. Because you read it once. So what he said will be blessed is you look and you continue to look. You look and you continue to look. You look and you continue to look. That is how you fellowship with the word of God as how you fellowship with God. Now look at John chapter 15 and verse 7. John chapter 15 and verse 7. I'm done in three minutes. John chapter 15 and verse 7 now says, If you remain in me, as we have a relationship, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Say no limits. No limits. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? You see, and it's good for us to pray, but we like to ask, and we ignore the condition. Amen. Oh, no, 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 no. I wish I had time to unpack this for you. If you remain in me, maintain your vital connection, then let my words dwell in you. Colossians 3.16. Okay? It says, let it, let it dwell in you in excess. What that word will do. Okay? Let's join it with another scripture. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. It is the one at work in you. What does it do? What the word will do is give desire. Yes. That's why he says, so ask whatever you wish. Because the word that you have looked and you continue to look into will give you desire. Listen, the moment it's a reality in your heart, the external has no choice. That is how to take off all the limits. Remain in me and let my words. Now watch this. The NIV says remain. If you read it in the King James, it says abide. From the Greek, that word means to take up permanent residence. The word of God is not an opinion. That I, that I reach out for when it's convenient for me. Yeah. Are you listening to me? When the totality of my externals is contradicting what the word of God says, I will still hold on to the word because the word within me will create desire. Listen, it is not that God has not answered your prayer. It is that you have not answered God's prayer. Amen? That the word has to be inside you, incubate inside you till it becomes desire. You remember that guy that was listening to Paul? Paul was preaching. Paul said, Paul, Bible said Paul could see that he had faith to be healed. The word was burning. See, when the word begins to burn inside you, nobody can stop you. Yes. The people that walk closely with me, you understand, a few months ago, I was going to make a decision and I told them, when we make this decision, we're going to enter trouble. We will have some financial hardship for a season. And it, am I right? I told them. I could see it inside me. So when the season came, and things started, all I did was, I was just coming up with strategy to deal with the season. Because the season is going to be over. But this thing that we are going to get, we are going to get it. I saw it in my heart. The one I'm seeing now is land for the Lekki Church. Amen? As I'm driving, I'm just seeing land everywhere. Land everywhere. This morning, I was calculating it in my head. I don't need to do anything about it now. But I'm going to let the word percolate. The word will percolate. See, you hear that statement, where there is a will, there is a way. It's true. The moment it's a reality in your heart, it's like when you have a document on your system and your system is vitally connected to your printer and you click print. There may be a network issue. They may take the light. Anything may go wrong. But the next time you switch on the printer, what's it doing first? The last document you sent. Weeping me endure for the night. But joy comes in the morning. And it is with joy that you draw from the wells of salvation. Is somebody listening to me? So sometimes just get the picture and print. The world may be resisting. The printer may be out of ink. <laughs> you see, but the, the next, when the printer is ready, the next document we are printing is the last one we sent. Hallelujah. Principle number three, and I'm out of your face. Subdue the flesh. Subdue the flesh. Now, what I've just shared to you, these three steps, they are the message for next week Sunday. Is that okay? So when I come next week Sunday, don't say I don't have revelation. I told you already what the message next week Sunday is all about. See, but we're now going to unpack what is the flesh. How do I subdue the flesh? Final instruction. The Holy Spirit said, when you place restrictions on the flesh, you unleash your genius. When you place restrictions on the flesh, you unleash your genius. You know, even people that are not born again, they understand these principles and they tap into it. That when a, a very serious football match, 
like the one that is happening today. When it is about to be played, there are restrictions they place on the boys. You don't club. There are things you don't eat. They tell them, you don't move close to a woman. What? You've got to do what? You've got to subdue the flesh so that your genius can find expression. I know it's not detailed, but that should suffice till next week Sunday. Have you been blessed this morning? Father, we thank you. Let's lift our hands and give him praise. Thank you.